I want to start by asking you. Nice to I, be here. I know that you're particularly interested in talking about cancel culture. I think it's fair to say. I understand, in fact, you're making a documentary about it. What is it about cancel culture that interests you? Well, it's a relatively new phenomenon. And of course, it affects comedians because uh, a lot of us do jokes that uh, the cancel culture people, the woke people, don't think are right or don't think are correct. So I've been asked to do the program. So I've been exploring it. I've been reading quite a lot of books and trying to understand what it's all about. But it's quite a complex um, matter. And it seems to be boiling down to uh, the fact that I think some people are rather overprotective. I mean, we all want parents to be protective, but we don't want them to be overprotective because that uh, raises children who are not perhaps um, very well going to adapt to the real world. I think it's very important that uh, things should go wrong and that minor bad things should happen because that helps people to learn to become a little bit tougher when they go out into the world, which is not a terribly friendly place a lot of the time. And if we overprotect them, then I think that doesn't work very well. But John, you know, some would say um, that what you're suggesting you is that but? it's an why old... Do you, why do you say but? Why do you say but? Oh, it, it was just Wouldn't a turn you of like phrase. Just explore what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. I, that's precisely but. what let's I'm. Get, let's try That's the precisely here. what I'm about to do. If you would give me the opportunity to do that, I want to ask you: There are people out there who, having heard your views, would consider them to be old-fashioned and not uh, taking into consideration the feelings of people who have been hurt by some of these comments. And I want to give you the example, for, ex uh, for instance, in Britain, where racist behavior, for instance, was couched as a bit of banter. Is that acceptable, in your view, as a joke? I think it's a very poor question. I I'd like you to answer it. Well, it's hard because it's so scattered and it has so many different ideas in it, and I don't know which place to start with to answer it. I, what I've said is the important thing is that people are protected to the right degree, not overprotected and not underprotected. So the question becomes, what is the right degree? Now, the practitioners of cognitive behavioral therapy which is a very successful therapy, which is used a lot to treat depression and anxiety in young people, say that the woke ideas are pretty much the opposite of what they use to make people less depressed and anxious. Now, it doesn't matter whether that's old fashioned or new fashioned or even from the early 12th century, that is a very interesting idea and needs to be explored without using these emotional terms like uh, people being hurt and all this kind of thing. Let's try to be a little bit more calm about it and use less emotionally loaded words. Are you saying that people now, I are... Think, I think you were going to ask me, are you going to ask me about being here in Singapore to do shows yes. and in Bangkok, or is that at the back of your agenda? No, no, we, we certainly did ask you about that, John. Why are you... Why have you chosen Asia as a place to do these uh, comedy shows, particularly when we're in the middle of a pandemic? Well, uh, it's very hard to uh, plan at the moment, as you might have noticed. I don't know. Uh, you probably realize that sometimes a new variant comes along at very short notice and causes a great deal of disturbance very, very quickly. So these shows were, packed, were arranged some time ago when there was a good chance that the uh, Delta variant was coming under control. Then the Omicron one came up about three weeks ago, which of course changed it all. But our plans have been set way before that. Does that make sense to you? Yes, indeed, it does. Have you had to change your routine at all because of the pandemic or make adjustments to it? No, I haven't started to write it yet because I don't do it for three weeks. And I have a great deal of material that I've sort of accumulated over the past uh, 15 years. The first time I started doing this kind of show was 2006. So I'm going to choose the, the material that I think is right. But I've been asked to base it on a talk that I have, which is about why there is no hope, 
the main central point of which is the fact that one of the great problems these days is that everyone wants to be right and nobody really wants to listen to other people's opinions. Are you, uh, in that sense, if you could elaborate a little bit more about what that means when you think that are people not listening to each other, is, is that your sense of what is happening? Yes, very much so. I mean, the historians used to say about the English that we had a great ability to compromise, and that was why we were quite successful. Uh, I don't see much sign of that, though. I just see a lot of Greeks on either side absolutely convinced that they're right, without really being interested in trying to look at the, at the facts and the theories that are involved in these kind of decisions. And if you look at America now, and it's highly polarized society, you realize that people really aren't listening to each other at all because the Trump supporters watch Fox News and get one version of the news and other people watch other channels and get a different version of the news. They both think that the version they're getting is right, which is naive. John, I want to ask you about your thoughts on another comedian. I don't know if you know this American comedian, Dave Chappelle, who faced a huge backlash for his oh, we're comments. Back on, we're back on cancel culture. Yes, I thought we were going to be talking about shows and comedy, but I'm not interested in doing this interview anymore. So I'll leave you now. Bye-bye. Okay, that's your prerogative.